So, here we go again. First, I just want to give a massive thank you for all the support my video has gotten. If I'm being honest, I didn't expect it to get such a glowing reception, but I've been proven wrong. And also thank you to everyone who suggested corrections to go in the video you're about to watch. But I would like to preface something first before continuing. So in order for my Shovel Knight video to get more reach, a friend of mine told me to go into the Discorder of No Quarter Discord server, as it is the biggest Shovel Knight fan Discord server. What I wasn't prepared for was to discover that one of the iceberg creators I cited in my video was a mod on that server, Magma. Needless to say, I was a little intimidated at first, but the dude is actually pretty cool. He did point out, though, that the iceberg I had looked at was an older version, and that he had made a newer version that he assured me had no joke injuries. So, this video is kinda gonna be a double feature, going over the corrections for my video first, and then going over Magma's updated iceberg. Specifically all the entries I didn't cover on the combined iceberg I made in the previous video, and entries that are just obvious if you beat the games. Plus, I'll also be throwing in a few more things I found during research that I'll sprinkle in. Shoutouts to Magma again for making the updated iceberg and clarifying some entries during research, and Spectral Fineries and Mercy for helping with research and recording some footage. Hi, my username is Caramel Chopper, but you can just call me Chopper for short. And without further ado, let's start this new game plus. Fish head. Starting with the very first entry I covered, there are, in fact, more instances of fish head appearing. For starters, you can actually get a school of fish heads running through the armor outpost on rare occasions, and in Rivals of Aether, one of the games Shovel Knight guest starred in, you can remove his helmet revealing he is a fish head. I didn't know about that because I never actually played Rivals of Aether before. Cheat codes. The walk cycle cheat for Plague Knight references Alucard's walk cycle from Symphony of the Night, not Richter's. This one is on me again, as I never played Symphony of the Night, and only heard that Plague of Shadows was designed to be like an homage to Richter mode from the Castlevania games. Hence, I thought the character that inspired the campaign idea had the walk cycle reference. King Knight is the first knight. Someone pointed out that King Knight can't be the first knight recruited because of Spectre Knight's curios in King of Cards. He has the Spider Scythe, the Bounding Soul, and Judgment Rush when you first fight him, and then goes on to have Skeletal Sentries in the rematch. You could also interpret his mid-fight transformation as the Hover Plume as well, but that's a bit of a stretch. What matters is this would imply Spectre Knight beat the Flying Machine, Explodatorium, Stranded Ship, and Lichyard. This would then imply that Propeller Knight, Plague Knight, and Polar Knight were recruited before King of Cards took place. During it, the Lich Guard is beaten, and between King Knight fighting King Burger and fighting the Enchantress, Mole Knight and Tinker Knight are defeated as they join Polar Knight to accept recruitment. This would mean King Knight is the 6th Knight recruited, and thus Treasure Knight and Spectre Knight are the 7th and 8th like before. I'm just gonna say for now, I personally don't believe this is what the order of recruitment is. I personally think that the curios that Spectre Knight uses isn't canonical and was rather chosen for gameplay reasons. After all, imagine him using the Kronos coin on you, or spamming the Will Skull or Barrier Lantern. And in Plague of Shadows, when you fight Shovel Knight in the Explodatorium, he can use the Warhorn, which is not possible to have at that point in Shovel of Hope. Again, showing it was likely for gameplay reasons rather than lore. Accountant Knight It was pointed out that Accountant Knight may actually be referring to a scrap character known as Donator Knight. They do have unused sprites that can be seen on the old Kickstarter page, and share the same headpiece Treasure Knight wears in the Dirk Plot Dash easter egg. It was likely going to be a shopkeeper of some sort before being scrapped, and in the Discorder server, Nick Wozniak added that there was the suggested idea he would have attacked the player with Kickstarter backer names, likely in a minigame of some sort. Shield Knight Dies This was probably referring to early story concepts for Shovel Knight, where the ending would have involved Shovel Knight burying his dead wife. Taking the fact that Shield Knight and Shovel Knight are pretty much an item canonically, 
it would make sense that she'd be the one dead if this earlier story idea was implemented. Princess Shield Knight This is just here because there is actually another princess sprite, or rather set of princess sprites, that can be found in the asset dump the devs did a while back. It is a bit more detailed, showing that it was cut a bit later in development than what was once thought. Percy's Hands Percy is canonically supposed to have hands. Someone suggested that why he has hooves is that they're some sort of weird glove situation? Or it could just be an artistic choice for simplicity when it happens. A similar thing can be said for Mole Knight's thumbs as well, being absent to make the sprite less cluttered. I will also point out that Percy has hooves in Dig. Mole Knight is a blorb. A commenter suggested that it could just be his armor that is blorb-like, since he is referred to as Mole Knight during Dig, which is fair enough, yeah. I will also add, though, that a lot of Mole Knight sprites utilize squash and stretch for animation, so who knows. Propeller's pirate rival. He claims to have no rivals, but clearly he does. Hmm. Super Skeleton is the worst. It is, in fact, placeholder text from the beta versions of Shovel Knight. Take a look at this clip of the devs playing the beta. Dialogue be, I bet it'll be the same. Rip portrait oh, How dare you, I can't believe you're super Wait, I'm gonna press I'm gonna press space bar. Super skeleton is the worst. No! <laughs> How dare you! You, you are, are the worst! worst. <laughs> wow. We're really heavy in the super skeleton. Super skeleton. <laughs> the order of no quarter lasted less than two weeks. I completely forgot Pocket Dungeon takes place sometime during Shovel of Hope. It of course isn't said when, and we don't have a frame of reference for how long it took everyone to get out of the Pocket Dungeon, but that probably would have added time to the adventure. Still, the Order of No Quarter didn't last long at all when they were fully formed and at the height of their power. France doesn't exist. Just thought I'd clarify this entry instead of it being a cryptic joke like at the end of the previous video. Propeller Knight obviously speaks various French phrases in his dialogue, but the country of France itself is never mentioned at all. No dialogue referring to Propeller Knight being French, no maps or globes have sprites that show our Earth's geography. So France doesn't exist. Here's a clip from the devs about the subject from the Trivia Night event livestream which will be cited a lot more later in the video. So that means that means Shovel Knight's not on Earth, then. That's, that's a big deal. Uh, well, everybody calls, everybody calls uh, Propeller Knight French, but there's no France there, so... That's what I think. That's the ladyest here. He's like... Yeah. The Code of Shovelry Slash mercilessly and dig tirelessly, is officially what the code of chivalry is that Shovel Knight follows. Dragon Gold Armor In the Tower of Fate, there is a gold armor who has a habit of hanging out under lamps. Knocking the lamps over will change their armor color. Do this enough times throughout the game and it's revealed they're actually a dragon. However, they state that if you see them later, it means their appearance was accepted for who he is, which, um... Yeah, this is the last time they're seen outside of Showdown. And in the Showdown story modes he appears in, his helmet gets stolen by Mr. Hat, and he stands guard in Pride Moor under King Knight's control. Poor dude. Also, his head sprite is actually borrowed from the Kickstarter portrait of Magnus Aduro. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but still cool. Just Dirt Serial A 2022 April Fool's tweet from Yacht Club Games. The shop page 404 is now, but using the Wayback Machine you'll discover the serial was selling for over $300,000. And there was only one for sale. And it had no nutritional content whatsoever, as expected. Shovel Knight 64 
Speaking of April Fool's jokes, this was the April Fool's joke for 2018. A trailer that showed Shovel Knight running on the Commodore 64, complete with no enemies, music, or even a game over screen. Lovely. Horus, Manny, and Legion were the original Tower of Fate residents. Pretty self-explanatory, not much else to say. Multiple Shovel Knights. This would be referring to the School of Fish Heads Easter Egg mentioned earlier. Again, not much else to say aside from that. Battletoads and God of War Shared Universes. Depending on what console you're using to run Shovel of Hope, you'll have different exclusive secret content to do. Nintendo consoles lets you use Amiibo, but the Xbox and Windows versions let you have a secret fight against the Battletoads. Well, from Battletoads. And the PlayStation and Vita versions let you fight Kratos from God of War. Specifically the version before the series' Nordic reboot. They also give you unique armor upon beating their boss fights, and because of Shovel Knight, now also share a universe. Imposter Puzzle Knight Upon unlocking Puzzle Knight as a playable character in Pocket Dungeon, and reaching the penultimate boss of a true run or the final boss of a normal run, you'll fight Puzzle Knight as Puzzle Knight. The one you're fighting even exclaims that you are an imposter. Vicar of Vigor's Backstory It's explained by the devs that he is a joke. The setup being that you see statues of him everywhere in the world, and he's about to explain his lore, and the punchline being that King Knight cuts him off and does not care whatsoever. So there is no actual lore. And King Knight is an asshole. Dark Acolyte is the Trouple Acolyte in Shovel of Hope and Plague of Shadows. This would have been an entry I would have skipped over since it is just in the ending cutscene of Spectre of Torment, but there is a little more. On multiple occasions, the devs have also said that the Dark Acolyte was previously a Trouple Acolyte before. Specifically, the one who acts as a representative for the Trouple King during the final boss of King of Cards. I'm up on sweeping the floors. You can see Dark Acolyte uh, pleading to be returned to the Trouble King's lead. The Spectre Fairy follows the male Trouble Light in King of Cards. Is it Dark Acolyte? Yes. Thus, it's implied that after falling down the tower, he was corrupted and became the Dark Acolyte. This makes sense as he is absent when exploring the Tower of Justice, when other members of the Enchantress's army, like Red, Missy, and Horus, are present. Multiplayer Joustus You can actually play Joustus in a local multiplayer format. All you gotta do is go to King Knight's secret room and interact with the mirror by pressing up. You can choose the board, your cards, or even use preset decks from the characters you beat in the campaign already. Pretty neat! Tinker Knight only speaks in monosyllabic words. The small man only speaks in small words like this. Not much else to say here. Gulper Mage was fan-made. This is revealed in a Pixel Time with Waz video where the sprite is clearly based on fan art made by Matthew Swagger. Joustus cards that don't work in the timeline. There's quite a few Joustus cards that just don't make sense timeline-wise. For starters, going back to the Dark Acolyte, why does he have a card if he is supposedly not corrupted yet, as said in a previous entry? Same goes for Dark Rees, since he is corrupted during Spectre Knight's quest. Finally, the card for Tifalon has her depicted with the treasure chest trap, when she hasn't been tamed yet by Treasure Knight at this point. While not timeline contradicting, I'm also just going to point out the strangeness that is the Enchantress making cards of Shield Knight, Luan, and Donovan. I understand they're here so that every character has a card, but I just find it very weird she bothered to make them. Unless she isn't the one making them, after all... Cardia exists as well. 
Maybe the cards were created before by a higher power that knows the future, and the Enchantress is just the one printing them. Who knows? Origin of Baz's Lightning Powers Out of universe, it was because of the scrapped Street Fighter character concept he's based on. In universe, however, there isn't a clear explanation. We canonically see him use them for the first time in King of Cards. He says he wants Lightning Powers to be a signature power when he tries to join the Order Inspector of Torment. And in Plague of Shadows, he says there is no scientific explanation for his powers. He's just able to do it. Sledge Farmer The least known member of the Farmer family who shows up in Pocket Dungeon. He makes statuettes of characters who beat all their quandaries, and has a family photo of him with the other farmers and Rees. Kinda only here on the account of being slightly obscure compared to the other farmers. King Knight's Father's Secret Room In King Knight's Secret Room, the devs have stated that there are clues as to where his father went. In the cellar-looking area where you can find the card for Mom, you can spot a map, an airship similar to the ones used during Propeller's boss fight, and a desk with some notes, implying he is out exploring the world. Scrap Showdown Characters there is a few unfinished and unused sprites for the character select in Showdown. We can see a Wisdom, a Hover Meanie, King Pridemore, a Trapple Acolyte, and a Birder that was likely King Birder. There's also sprites of Percy without his hay bale, and Mona with a much longer outfit. Pretty neat! 23 Missing Showdown Steam Achievements In Showdown, there's 56 feats, which are in-game achievements but only 33 have associated Steam achievements, leaving 23 missing. Said 23 missing achievements are for completing most of the cast story modes, specifically the ones that unlock other characters, an achievement for reminiscing as Spectre Knight on the Tower of Fate stage to unlock the Donovan set as a costume, and having all other feats unlocked, which gives you Fish Head as an alternate costume. These were likely cut because you can unlock the characters outside of story mode by playing a set amount of matches and thus giving you multiple ways to get the achievement, or they were just easy and redundant for the other two. Plague Minion Skeleton in Plague Knight's Secret Room Yep, he is in fact there! Behind a breakable background piece. Just kinda got lost in there. Rippin' Pisces, my guy. Hyper Camelot. This is a musical piece that Jake Kaufman composed before Shovel Knight. Take a listen. Doesn't it sound familiar? Well, this is actually what the battle theme against the Wandering Travelers is based on. This is the one and only song that was actually composed before Shovel Knight was a thing. Now, the reason for why Hyper Camelot was composed is also neat. So, it was written by Jake for a Quackfest competition, where the goal was to write a song in one hour. It was written in a style emulating old cartoon themes, stuff like Transformers or He-Man, as a theme for a cartoon that never existed. On the Bandcamp page where you can find the theme, there is a link to a MIDI file of the version of the song made for the competition, but said MIDI file can't be accessed and is considered lost media now. Which is a shame, because there's also a Breaking Bad cartoon theme in there, too. But it is Jake's file. He can do whatever he wants with it. Zorix Lore and Phantom Strikers Showdown Ending I'm lumping these two together because they kind of talk about the same thing. So, in the instruction manual for Showdown, there is a description for the Cube of Zorix item. 
It states that it was forged long ago by some foul demonic power. It was stated by the devs that the statues seen in Phantom Striker's ending depict members of the Knights of Zorix, and that Phantom Striker has a past with red. Everything else beyond that is mostly fan headcanon. Some speculate that the Birder Bluffs was where the headquarters of the Knights of Zorix was located, and the Birders are related due to having a similar color palette with the cube. Some believe Stryker is the last surviving member, and he is testing adventurers to see if they're worthy on carrying on the duties of the group. But again, all just fan speculation. Treasure Knight is sentient gold. I couldn't find the exact source of where this came from, but I did discover evidence for it. In the art dump I mentioned earlier that had the princess sprite, there's unused sprites of Treasure Knight's head separated from his body in different positions, labeled Death Helmet 00-07, and an FLC file of the sprites animated. This would imply that upon defeat, his helmet would fly away, revealing that he is just made of gold. This was probably cut to to being kinda morbid. Explodatorium is the ruins of a castle. This can be seen if you look at it on the map and background details in the stage. This was also mentioned by the devs. The idea is that like that that castle, you're like in the underdark of that castle. Um, above it, it was a, a once like working castle. That's why there's like you know pillars and, and stuff in there. So. Um, Play nights like in the ruins of an ancient castle and something like that. San Fernando Valley. It's jokingly stated by Celia that the valley Shovel Knight takes place in is San Fernando Valley, in California due to the presence of a valley girl accent in one of the NPCs. But it was revealed in Dig to canonically be called the Valley of Lander. The undead smell like Oreos. Just some joke lore from the Trivia Night event referring to Phantom Striker smelling the stench of death on Spectre Knight, and said smell smells like Oreos. Not much else to say. What, what it goes to smell like? What it goes to smell like? Yeah. Death? Yeah. <laughs> Oreos. And Oreos. Death and Oreos are what ghosts smell. Is that is that canon to Shovel Knight or to life? Or both? Like Knight and Percy met in Rhode Island Community College. Again, more non-canon joke lore from the Trivia Night stream. Is there any backstory to how Percy first met Plague Knight, or did he just kind of show up one day looking for a job? He's an expert. He's like, he, he knows science. Okay, in my head canon before I started working at Yacht Club Games, yeah. so not official, they met in community what? college. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty terrible to hear. <laughs> met in community college. Though. Yeah, well, okay. he's a transfer, okay? It's... A smarter, cheaper way. I agree. I they agree. went to college in Rhode Island together. Yeah, I yeah. think in Rhode Island. The skeleton in Plague Knight's room was from the college, and he stole it out of spite. Chester's provider. He says that he knows a guy, and that's where he gets his arcanas from. But never said who it is. He just knows a guy. Prism Knight's mom died, confirmed in a tweet by Vine on the subject. This might have been the catalyst for Puzzle Knight to go discover the pocket dungeon and get the telescope for his daughter, realizing he won't always be there for the last family member he has. Or it is the catalyst for Prism Knight to go find her last family member after he disappeared. Either way, rest in pepperonis. Horace's confetti hurts enemies. If you were to complete Horus' challenge in Spectre of Torment, and use the Skeletal Sentry upon winning, the Sentry will actually take damage from the confetti that falls if you time it right. Since the Skeletal Sentry summoned our stand-ins for the Bone Clangs, Spectre Knight can summon in his boss fights, who are regular enemies, then it can be extrapolated that the other normal enemies could also be hurt by Horus' confetti. This is probably because it uses the same sprites and code King Knight's confetti uses. Only reason it doesn't hurt Spectre Knight is the player's hitbox is turned off upon hitting the victory state. Donovan... Do, do I have to say it? I don't want audio of me saying it on the internet. 
You know this will come back to haunt me. And it's not even canon, it's just another dev joke. <sighs> Look, I'm not saying it. And this joke is already not funny. You can't make me say it. I'm the one writing the script. Why are you so insistent I say Donovan Placentar? F Amount of Shield Knight Helmets Throughout the games, you can find multiple Shield Knight Helmets. There's one in Mr. Hatch's Showdown Ending, one in the Enchantress's Secret Room in King of Cards, one in the Shovel of Hope opening, and of course, the one she wears when she transforms back from the Enchantress. Just kinda a weird detail. Treasure Knight's Dead Wife Surprisingly, this one isn't actually developer lore. It is a widespread hoax in the fan community that summer it was mentioned by the devs that Treasure Knight had a dead wife. And that would have been a plot point in his backstory if he had gotten a campaign, likely the source of his greed in some way. This, however, never happened. I don't have a source as to where it started, but it is confirmed by the devs that they had never planned that idea out. We haven't really like, explored his backstory. I remember... Um, I don't remember exactly when or what the context of this was, but there is like the common meme that people are like, it has something to do with his dead wife. Yeah, I guess there's not really much of an answer there because we haven't developed that story. If we if we did Treasure of the Deep as like, like you know, another campaign, then we would find all about it. I still personally like that headcanon though, because it gives Treasure Knight something character-wise besides extreme avarice. Rest in pterodactyls. King of Cards and Spectre of Torment Timeline Placement Oh boy, this one is a fucking doozy. So, a surface level playthrough of Treasure Trove would lead one to conclude that the order of the games take place in is King of Cards, Spectre of Torment, Showdown, and then Shovel of Hope and Plague of Shadows at around the same time. There is obviously some overlap between King of Cards and Spectre of Torment 2, but this overlap has made some confusion as to how much of Spectre Torment takes place within King of Cards. For starters, Spectre Knight's curios in King of Cards would point to him being around halfway his adventure, while the Trapple Alkalite still remains uncorrupted. Drowsis cards also make timeline placement dubious, as mentioned earlier. Enemies, like the Gulper Mage, show up at the Tower of Justice when there's no other evidence Treasure Knight has been recruited yet. There's just a bunch of little things that add up to make the timeline make no sense. Well, unless you use Occam's Razor. The simplest explanation is usually the correct one. And in this case, the simplest explanation is just that Yacht Club did these things for gameplay reasons, or because it was cool. Now, this obviously doesn't invalidate any attempts to make a coherent timeline. Rather, I just think it lends itself more to player interpretation without anyone being outright wrong. I personally think King of Hearts takes place mostly before Spectre Torment, because I think it thematically makes more sense, but you can have a different opinion and that's fine. To my knowledge, Yacht Club hasn't given a set-in-stone timeline for the exact events in the games. Just a vague and broad overall timeline. So it's up to you to decide when the games take place. Black Knight is the strongest character. This one needs some explanation. So in Showdown, every single playable character has a story mode and a reoccurring rival who they fight in said story mode. It is canon that every character at some point beats their story. Shovel Knight has canonically beaten every single character in Shovel of Hope but gets beaten by Polar Knight when he is Polar Knight's rival in Showdown, meaning Polar Knight is stronger. Polar Knight is beaten by Black Knight in Black Knight story mode, thus making him even stronger. Black Knight is the rival of the Enchantress, and he is beaten, but we know character-wise he would be holding back in this situation, as he knows the Enchantress is Shield Knight, who he swore to protect, thus not technically a loss as he wasn't fighting at full strength. This means that Black Knight is in fact the strongest character. Until you realize he canonically gets clapped by Spectre Knight twice before Showdown, and then is beaten by Shovel Knight and Plague Knight on multiple occasions in their campaigns. Yeah, this last entry is just kind of a meme based on a copy poster from the Discorder server. I have killed this joke! You can't stop me! And that's it! 
That's all my corrections and a ton more Shovel Knight trivia out in the world. This will probably be my last Shovel Knight video for a while, but stick around for whatever I make next. I have some other video ideas in the works that I want to eventually do, so subscribe if you want to be surprised by what I end up making. Just maybe don't expect them soon, as I am quite busy offline. Anyways, thank you for watching the entire video! <laughs>